Felipe Martinez. I'm filling in for him today. If you're visiting with us and haven't met me before, my name is Marietta Macy. I serve as the Director of Children's and Youth Ministry here at church. I have a couple of announcements this morning. Does anybody out there have any announcements? Okay. So tonight, a lot of you have already heard, but just a reminder, we are having an event for the whole church. If you are 18 and over, at 4th Street Bar and Grill tonight, we are going to eat, drink, and be merry together. This is an event put on, just sponsored by the church, for, uh, to give us some time to enjoy each other's company, to sing, to celebrate this Christmas season, and to get ready for the new year. So if you are 18 and over, bring your ID, and uh, we will have food will be provided and drinks will be on your own. So come and join us for that. Uh, I also want to bring your attention to uh, something that's coming up next year that I want to get on your radars. Uh, we are going on another trip to Israel-Palestine, to the Holy Land. So next October, there will be a trip for our Presbytery, and as part of the Engaging Young Adults grant that we have received, we have, we have four scholarships for young adults specifically to go on that trip. So you don't have to be a young adult to go on the trip. Uh, but we do have those four scholarships, so if you're a young adult or know a young adult, start thinking about that. Uh, and if anybody has any questions about the trip, there'll be more information coming out about it, specific prices, dates, our itinerary from day to day, and I'll share all that with you when it um, materializes. I think that's it this morning. Oh, I want to thank our Living by Faith band is here leading us in music this morning, so thank you all. Just as we are many individuals come from many places, united here, this font reminds us that God unites us all in one family as siblings and equally beloved by Christ. Let us share signs of that peace and love with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Before we get started, I'd like to welcome my friend Tent, Trent Nintrip, who just asked if he could join us today on bass guitar. So this is Trent Nintrip. Salvation that 
in body or spirit for our call to worship and respond with the words in bold print. God is telling a story in our lives. It's quite a story. Full of promises God makes and our struggles to trust. Full of mystery and angels with surprising news. Full of hard endings and unexpected new beginnings. Come, hear the story. Pay attention to the angel's message in your heart in this place and time. To to join, join all creation in worshiping the God who tells it full of grace and truth, who comes to Jesus, the Word made flesh, and makes our story holy. In 401. Oh, no. 
what buildings can find me, not in some heaven like you to wait. Here in this place, thunder light is shining. Now is the kingdom, and now is the day. Gather us here and hold us forever. Gather us here and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our The gift of unity is given to humanity by God, and God became human to show us how it can be accomplished. But we recognize that this is hard for us, and we sometimes fail. We know that a united community is not always visible to the world. Together, we now confess that most of the time, we do what comes easy to us, and not what challenges us to grow. God of justice and peace, love and life, we confess that we are often overcome by the persistent voices of fear and anger. We do not hear the voice of Jesus, which seems but a whisper. Fear trumpets, kill those whom you fear may kill you. Strong shall inherit the earth, and the rich shall forever rule the earth. Yet Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Fear instructs us, forgive no one. Those who wrong you are wrong. By forgiving them, you excuse the wrong, and only encourage them. Yet Jesus warns us, if you do not forgive people their sins, God will not forgive your sins. Anger declares, hate those who hate you. Loving those who hate you only encourages them to take further advantage of you. But Jesus asks, if you love those who love you, what a credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who Voice of anger and fear seems so strong, the wisdom so alluring, the way so sensible and safe. But Emmanuel was born into the world to show us that there is another way, the way of peace and justice, the way of love and life. When we lack the courage to seek your way, O oh God, when fear and Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The good news is this. God has come near, bringing hope, joy, and forgiveness to all. <clears throat> know that you are loved and forgiven, and be at peace. Comfort, comfort now, my people. Tell a priest who says our God, comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrows, Lord. To my people now proclaim, 
Lamb not caught and waits for them. Tell them that the streets are covered and the warfare now is over. The children are welcome to join me up front on the steps. something to share with you all for Christmas. This is a new book that I found that I really like, and I hope you will too. It's called Forensi's Light. And adults, just so you know, this is as much for you as it is for them. So I'm going to put the book out in the, um, out here in the laws room if you want to look at the pictures afterwards, which I recommend because they're really cool. Forensi likes dancing. Forensi likes books. But there is one thing Ferenzi does not like. Ferenzi does not like her light. It's always shining at the wrong time. At the movies, at slumber parties, during games of hide and seek. Your light makes you unique, said her mother. No one shines just like you. I'll cover up my light, Ferenzi thought. She gathered leaves and wrapped them around her until her light was hidden. The next day, Ferenzi's friends needed her help. At the movies, Tick dropped his snack under his seat. Ferenzi, can you shine your light down there? What light? I don't have a light, Ferenzi snapped. At the slumber party, Natalie whispered, Ferenzi, make your light shine. I'm scared of the dark. But Ferenzi let out a loud snore and pretended to be asleep. During a game of hide-and-seek, Ferenzi hid in her best spot, deep in the dark bushes. Come out, Ferenzi, shouted Legs. It's too hard to find you when your light doesn't shine. But Ferenzi pretended not to hear and flew away as fast as she could. Ferenzi found herself deep in the forest, far away from her friends. She had hoped they would forget about her light. She felt very sad. Just as she began to cry, she heard a strange sound coming from the bushes. Munch, munch, munch. Ferenzi flew closer to investigate. Munch, munch, crunch. I love it. You can't eat the bush. Well, bugs do. But people don't eat bushes. Not normally, you're right. What are you doing, asked Ferenzi. Creating my masterpiece, exclaimed the beetle, clicking his huge pinchers. I'm Curie. I'm using my magnificent pinchers to make wonderful art. Isn't it amazing? It's lovely, said Ferenzi. As she looked at Kiri's art, Ferenzi's light began to shine through the patterns in the leaves. You see the pattern starting to show up? Oh, how beautiful, Ferenzi gasped, enchanted by the colors and shapes that appeared all around her. Wow, whispered Kiri, your light is making the art even more magical. What a wonderful gift you have. Look at how cool that looks now. It's the light, the light is shining in the dark. It is. It's shining in the dark and making all these patterns. Isn't that pretty? And it's making an object. Mm-hmm. Different shapes. Oh, no, said Ferenzi. I don't like my light. I wish it would go away. She began grabbing leaves to wrap around herself. 
I understand, said Curie. I used to feel the same way about my pinchers. But then I realized I am brilliant. I am wonderful. I am unique. I wish I could feel like that about my light, Curie, but I don't, Ferenzi explained, and she flew home. A few days later, Ferenzi received a package. I think it might be. <coughs> Dear Ferenzi, I made this skirt just for you. I hope you will wear it to my art show tomorrow. Your light is a gift. Let it shine. Love, Curie. See the skirt that she's putting on? Ferenzi felt nervous as she arrived at the art show the next day, but as her light glimmered through that skirt, she saw the faces of her friends. How lovely! Brilliant! See what happens when you let your light shine? So now all of her friends get to enjoy that cool pattern. All those neat shapes on the wall. Well, Ferenzi twirled on the stage, she realized how powerful her light was. It was creating magical art, joy for all her friends, and happiness in her heart. Suddenly, Ferenzi felt very grateful that she was a firefly. Ferenzi grew to love her light, even when it was difficult. She always remembered the night that she let her light shine for everyone to see. The end. So I hope you all, if you recognize this Advent wreath up here, we have all of our candles lit today because we've talked all during Advent as our lead up to Christmas about light shining in the world and Jesus being our light. And we share that light with everybody. And you all have your own light and can share love and hope and joy and peace with everybody, which I know you're all very good at doing because I've seen you do it. Will you all pray with me, please? Dear God, we thank you for giving us each our own light that shines in unique and special and amazing ways. Help us use it to build your world and help your children. And help us shine even when we are sad or it may be difficult. We ask all these things in your many names. Amen. Right, so you all are welcome to go to Sunday school, third grade and under. Joseph was an old man, an old man was he. He caught a virgin Mary, the Queen of Galilee. He caught a virgin Mary, the Queen of Galilee. Joseph and Mary were walking one day Here is apples and cherries so fair to behold Here is apples and cherries so fair to behold When Mary spoke to Joseph, so meek and so mild, Joseph, gather me some cherries, for I am with child. Joseph, gather me some cherries, for I am with child. Then Joseph flew in anger, in anger he flew, 
let the father of the baby gather cherries for you. Let the father of the baby gather cherries for you. tree bowed low down, bowed down to the ground, and Mary gathered cherries while Joseph stood down, and Mary gathered cherries while Joseph stood down. scripture as if the opening score to Star Wars is playing, just to set the tone a little bit. And you can see these words floating up on the screen off into the distance, setting up the whole story, making it painfully obvious the epicness of what is about to happen and what has happened to bring us to this pivotal moment in God's story for humanity. Introducing you to the characters you should know and the amazing miracles that they've performed as heroic but everyday flawed people, just like you and me. Heroes of every shape and size, gender and race, some people even that the world might call scoundrels, morally corrupt, murderers even. Audacious people who bucked society's rules and restrictions in order to do what was right and what God needed them to do. So, now that I've set the scene, please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. An account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah, the father of Perez, and Zerah, by Tamar. And Perez, the father of Hezron, and Hezron, the father of Aram. And Aram, the father of Abinadab, and Abinadab, the father of Nashon. And Nashon, the father of Salmon. And Salmon, the father of Boaz, by Rahab. And Boaz, the father of Obed, by Ruth. And Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, a.k.a. Bathsheba. And Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. And Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. And Abijah, the father of Asaph. And Asaph, the father of Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. And Joram, the father of Uzziah. And Uzziah, the father of Jotham. And Jotham, the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh, the father of Amos, and Amos, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers, at the time of deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Salathiel, and Salathiel, the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. And Abiud, the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim, the father of Azor, and Azor, the father of Zadok, and Zadok, the father of Achim, and Achim, the father of Eliud, and Eliud, the father of Eleazar, 
and Eleazar the father of Mathen, and Mathen the father of Jacob. And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Here ends our reading. The word of God for the people of God. Just who do you think you are? Can you imagine how many times you would have heard that question or something similar, maybe even a little more obscene in nature if you hung out with Jesus all the time? Just who do you think you are to tell me to give my money away? I worked hard to be this rich. Just who do you think you are telling me to forgive people over and over again, even when they've done that? To love my enemy? That everyone, everyone is my neighbor? That I should not only tolerate, but share my table with sinners, with tax collectors, with prostitutes? Just who do you think you are, Jesus? As if to preempt that question that was sure to come of Jesus and his story, Matthew starts his gospel by answering all those questions and more with the genealogy of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And I know this is typically one of those passages that we kind of skip over because it's just a bunch of names and they're all really hard to say. <laughs> and they are not that easy. <laughs> and although it seems like there are a lot of names mentioned here, and I'm sure it felt like it hearing them all in a row, not all of the names in Jesus' lineage are mentioned. Just particular ones are included in this list. If you're familiar with the history of your God and your neighbors the way that Matthew's readers would have been, you would recognize this listing as representative and somewhat artificial. The pattern of language and names used are meant to emphasize God's accomplishments of God's purposes rather than give us an accurate representation, Ancestry.com style, of Jesus' family history. On a visit to Palestine during Advent a few years ago, I was running some errands with a friend, and we were meeting with a store owner to discuss some business, and in his office, I noticed he had hanging on the wall a beautiful framed family tree. As we finished our tea and chatted, because even business doesn't happen without tea and hospitality in Palestine, my friend asked him to share with us about the picture. She already knew the history herself and wanted me to know it as well. The frame contained the story of his ancestry all the way back to Joseph. Not Joseph, Jesus' dad, Joseph. I'm talking coat of many colors, Joseph, ancient Egypt, Joseph, one of the sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, Joseph. A modern day Palestinian Christian can trace his ancestry all the way back to the tribe of Israel that he came from. Let that sink in the next time you listen to the news. It kind of destroys a lot of our modern conventions and divisions that we insist are real and lasting. And I know that after your immediate awe at this news, our skepticism wants to bring us crashing back to earth with questions like, well, can he really have traced every generation back that far? How could he actually know? There weren't even written records for a long time. Can he really be sure about it? Well, yes and no, but mostly yes, in the ways that it really matters, in the ways that tell someone who they are deep down when things get tough, in the ways that give one literal and metaphorical roots so we don't get tossed and tumbled by the world. It's true in the ways that give you examples and inspiration when you just don't know what to do. It's true in the way that fills in the gaps, hangs flesh onto the bones so we can comprehend how to relate. It's true in the ways that it would have mattered to Matthew's readers and should to us today. 
The names listed in Jesus' genealogy are shorthand for an epic history, full of giants of faith, ancestors that against all odds, through dynasties and disaster, war and exile, trusted God and did their flawed best to do God's will. This was and is the introduction needed to know just who Jesus was before he can even tell us himself. So let's take a look at who some of those people were that were included and the collective story that they tell. Each name recalls a person involved in God's purposes. Some are well known that you probably recognized, and others are not mentioned anywhere but here. Some have whole chapters or even whole books written about them, and others we know next to nothing personal about. There are the typical firstborn children mentioned, but also the non-firstborn children. Jacob is listed, not Esau, for example. We have powerful people and powerless people, both included. Men and women are named, five women to be exact, which is not common at all to be included in the genealogy of the time. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, although she is named only as the wife of Uriah, and Mary are included. All of the women except Mary are either Gentiles or have Gentile connections, which means they're not Jewish or weren't born Jewish anyway, but they still made it into Jesus' ancestry because of their devotion and faith to God. The women that are listed in Jesus' genealogy are all women who did not always participate in traditional domestic arrangements. They were not married, separated from their spouse, widowed, remarried, or sex workers. Even though all of them are ultimately associated with male partners, their inclusion reminds us that marriage is not the prerequisite for men or women for righteous action or salvation. These women and men listed answer to a higher authority instead of society's conventional pressures and did what they had to do to live the life that God had in store for them, to fulfill the purpose God had not only for them, but continue the larger purpose God has for all of us. Matthew's gospel was written for a Jewish audience that had just begun to accept Gentile members into the family. And we've had the gift this last semester, this fall and winter, of learning some more of Jesus' ancestors that sometimes we skip over in the Old Testament from the Hebrew Bible. And understanding Jesus' Jewishness and his lineage, the people he came from as a human, is essential to understanding who Jesus is. This context is important to know to help understand the historic gravity of these passages, but it's also vitally important to know today because it's still describing the church we're supposed to be. The names that are listed in Jesus' genealogy emphasize the fact that this new movement was mixed ethnically, which at the time meant that neither Jew nor Gentile had privilege or advantage over the other anymore, that both were welcomed alongside each other into God's covenant. Judgment in God's family is meant to be based on doing the will of God, and your race, class, or gender do not give you any advantages or preferential treatment, as had been typical throughout history. And unfortunately, we still don't seem to have quite grasped this concept. If you read between the lines and back into Jewish history, this genealogy tells us that this Jesus character was about to turn everything upside down, including how importance was measured, who was in and who was out, and for what reasons. It's also important to note that Jesus is named as the son of Mary, not of Joseph, as would be typical of the time and was typical in the pattern of the verses that came previously. But it's only through Joseph that Jesus can claim his connection to the ever-looming King David, a connection that is essential to his identity, as foretold in Isaiah, and the reason that they end up in Bethlehem, the city of David, for his birth. Jesus basically claims his whole human lineage through adoption. This reality, along with the mentioning of many Gentiles and other diverse characters in his family history, signals to readers that God's family and covenant is open to anyone wanting to be adopted into it, 
There are no restrictions. Jesus' genealogy is meant to emphasize a capital T truth that is bigger than the facts alone. God's grander purposes rather than biological connections are what's most important here. God's purposes for the world are displayed through the naming of these particular ancestors. And by connecting Jesus to these specific people, Matthew gives Jesus and his followers a natural line that continues God's covenant relationship and opens it wider than ever so that even so that it even includes us thousands of years later and thousands of miles away from our biblical ancestors. So, just who do you think you are? Have you heard or felt the questioning accusation lately or sometime in your life? Just who do you think you are to tell me I'm supposed to feed those people? Just who do you think you are to tell me to give my money away to people who can't offer me anything in return? Who do you think you are suggesting we let those strangers into our country? Give them medical aid even if they can't pay for it? Who do you think you are telling me we've got to work on prison reform and set them free? To reduce my carbon footprint just because the oceans are rising a little? Just who do you think you are suggesting we send food and school supplies instead of bombs, teach peace instead of war? Just who do you think you are? Jesus? Well, you are related after all. Can't you see the family resemblance in each other? You are a child of Abraham, whose descendants became as numerous as the stars in spite of all odds. Of Tamar, bold and crafty. Of Abinadab, of Nashon, of clever, brave, and daring Rahab, who risked everything for strangers, who told her about our amazing God, of kind, loyal Ruth and Boaz, descendant of David, poet, musician, king, lover, and Bathsheba, strong, resilient, beloved, of wise, ostentatious Solomon, of Jotham, Manasseh, and exile Jeconiah in Babylon, of Azor, Zadok, and Mathen, a descendant of Joseph, who risked his reputation and trusted God's message from an angel, of Mary, the woman who is called blessed and birthed a revolution for God, a descendant of Jesus himself through your own adoption and faith in God. You are a child of God with an incredible lineage, and don't let anyone convince you otherwise. A lineage that's documented and undocumented, biological and adopted, a lineage with room for everyone and prejudice for none. You were created to be just as you are, to let your unique light shine in the world, offering warmth and guidance to others who have forgotten theirs or had it stolen by the evil ways of our world. You are the ones now bringing peace, hope, joy, and love into the world in the name of our Savior and Teacher, not just during the season of Christmas, but all year long, just like our ancestors taught us, just like Emmanuel showed us. Amen.
shall my name be blessed through the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring that the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you were great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past, from the end to the age to be. Your very name puts the crowd to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. And will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice season, O God, we are grateful for the gift of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received adoption as your children. With Jesus, our brother, we dedicate ourselves in ministry to the world. Receive these offerings we bring. May they be used in service of your grace and truth dwelling among us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Oh! 
blossom as white as any flower and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to be our sweet Savior the rising of the sun the running of the tear the playing of the merry organ sweet singing in the There's no crown, the rising of the sun, the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. The holly bears a berry, as red as any blood, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to do for sinners. The running of the tear, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir, singing in the choir, singing in the choir. together this morning. We have a couple of folks we want to hold in prayer, especially uh, requests from Nancy and John. Uh, ben Howery is in the end stage of terminal Alzheimer's. Ben is the father-in-law of their daughter, Cindy. So we want to hold Ben Howery and his family in our prayers. Uh, Don Maurice asks for prayers for herself and baby Catlea, who are still sick. So we want to pray for them and quick healing and for Irena, who's taking care of both of them. The prayer I want to share with you all this morning was written by a dear professor, my Hebrew professor from seminary. Her name is uh, Johanna von Wiekbos. I wanted to give her credit for this, for this beautiful prayer to, to read this morning. So you join me on prayer, please. Stubborn, stalwart, subverting God, justice-demanding, peace-hungering, world-loving God, God who breathes and bursts through community, God who takes on muscle and flesh through community. God who makes the unseen visible through community. Give us, we pray, communities with the craftiness of Shifra and Pua, who through holy subterfuge wrested Hebrew babies from Pharaoh's murdering hand. Communities with the dogged devotion of Ruth, who followed her bitter beloved Naomi to a foreign land. Communities with the boldness of Abigail, who did not ask permission before heading off to make peace with her husband's enemy. Communities with the tenacity of Rizpah, who through her fierce vigil over her slain sons exposed the king's depravity. Give us, we pray, communities with the gall of Nathan, who pointed his bony finger right up into power's face. We pray for you to give us communities with the dis discipline of Daniel, who said no to the best that the empire had to offer. Communities with the courage of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refused to pledge their allegiance to empire. Communities with the fidelity of Josiah and Jonathan, who would not consent to put away their foreign wives and children. Communities with the perception of Anna and Simeon, who saw hope for the world in the arms of a brand new mother. Give us, we pray, Communities with the anger of Jesus, 
who raged against abusive powers, communities with the temerity of the Syrophoenician woman who refused to let others define her, communities with the self-scrutiny of Paul who confronted discrimination in his own circles, and communities with the audacity of Silas who sang out through prison cell bars. Stubborn, stalwart, subverting God, gift our community with craftiness, dogged devotion, boldness, tenacity, gall, discipline, with courage, with fidelity, perception, anger, with temerity and self-scrutiny, audacity and imagination, so that we may be faithful, and more than that, so that we may be strategic, effective, and powerful, not for the sake of ourselves, but for the sake of this aching world, so that we may be loving, and more than that, so that we may live in solidarity with those we love, claiming their daily struggles as our own, so that our communities may be expressions of your realm, your will, of your heart here on earth. So together as a community here this morning, we pray the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, hear our 
place, knowing just who you are and whose you are, who's come before you, biologic and adopted, who's come before you, admirable and maybe a little less than admirable. Go forth with the Holy Spirit guiding you, with God inspiring you, and Jesus grounding you. Amen. God of the moon with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice lead us on our way, bringing God and hope to every night the days. Praying, let us work for peace, seeking to share our joy with all, working for a world that's new. Keep it coming with the tree. 